myself. But the problem Iran's is human rights record is under the microscope once again with renewed criticism in a UN report. In an interview in Geneva, Euronews spoke to Mohammad Javad Larajani, the head of Iran's Human Rights Council, about this and other key issues relating to the country's domestic and international affairs. Has a number of Mohammed Javad Larajani, thank you very much for being here on Euronews. There's been a lot of talk about Iran's human rights uh, situation. There's allegations of torture, of uh, repression of political opponents, um, lots of serious allegations, not only from the United Nations, but also uh, human rights organizations such as Amnesty and Human Rights Watch. What's your reaction to that? Well, I think the Iran right now is targeted, uh, well, I mean, is falling victim of another new kind of terrorism. I call it media and political terrorism. In the uh, council, if you look to the number of people who talked, uh, about more, over 100 uh, states uh, expressed their views about Iran, something around 50 states, which are United States and Europeans mostly, they criticized Iran, and the rest, which are over 70, they were very sympathetic with Iran. For us, the world, the world is not the United States and Britain and France. We consider it globally. Yes, these people make a lot of fuss that they are the flag leaders of the human rights, but the record of the United States is very dismal. This idea that there's a bias against Iran doesn't seem to be correct, because these same organizations, for example, I mentioned Amnesty, uh, Human Rights Watch, they've been very critical of the United States and their response towards human rights, especially with the issue of Guantanamo Bay, there's not really a bias against Iran, is there? The governments who are criticizing us, it's quite apparent that there is a kind of political uh, the structured uh, the criticism in here, politically manipulated. Second comes to the what is called NGOs. There is the second point in, in the criticism against us, and this is overlooking the differences. Our experience in the last 35 years is to create a political and civil structure, a polity as you call it in, in, in English, um, based on Islamic rationality, which is democratic, but it is not liberal, it is not secular. You have the highest rates of executions per capita as the head of the Human Rights Council in Iran. Are you proud of that? Not at all. We are very much unhappy and uneasy about that. And we are trying hard to change the laws which are bringing that situation about. As you know, and I've been said uh, several times, that uh, more than uh, almost 80% of this execution, 88-0, I mean, is stemming from narcotic drug-related crimes. I think if we change the law on the narcotic, 80% of our execution will be dropped. This is a first uh, pragmatic stage for uh, bringing down the execution. I'd just like to move on to talk about some specific cases. There's a Washington Post reporter, Jason Rezaian, who's been detained for more than 100 days. What's he done wrong? Well, uh, I'm not in a position to judge. I'm just reporting that the uh, security officials filed uh, against him uh, charges that uh, he was involved in activities beyond journalism. What does that mean? Well, in, involving activities which, which breaches the security of a state. Because the, the last article he wrote before being detained was about how Iranians love baseball. How does that threaten national security? No, this, this definitely does not uh, bring any charge against him. Your brother is the head of the judiciary. He has the power to recommend that someone be pardoned to the Supreme Leader. How likely is it, do you think, that he will be released in the coming days? First, there should be the court proceeding, and maybe the court pardon him itself, they totally drop all the charges, then everything is finished. If not, he has been indicted, then the second line, the pardon line, was, will start. So uh, we should go through this uh, mechanism. It doesn't go straight forward. But we think within a week or two? Well, I anticipated less than a month. Um, I just also want to move on um, to the case of uh, Honshe Havami, the British-Iranian uh, lady who was uh, protesting the right to watch a volleyball match. Um, she's now been detained for more than 125 days. She didn't meet her lawyer until the lawyer came into court. What happened? 
the idea is not by participating in, in going to the watch the match. The idea is that she broke the, the regulation in, in creating the violence, in creating a lot of uh, fusses around the, and the, you know that the, the, the places that she, the matches are holding are very volatile areas. You have it in the Western countries, you see a small, a small act, then huge violence will start over there. But isn't it a show of weakness that the Islamic Republic of Iran is so scared of a 25-year-old law Not graduate? Not at all. Why weakness? We are very, very strong in pursuing our way of uh, life and our regulations. Uh, and uh, suppose a person in the, in the metros of London do something wrong, then the, uh, the police will detain him. And this is not the weakness, because we say that the UK government is afraid. This is the way of law enforcement anyway. I mean, there are a lot of irregularities surrounding her case. Her family uh, say that it is tearing them apart. Would you agree to meet with the family? The door of my office is open always to meet the family of the accused, the family of the victim. So definitely my office is open. And I think there is no irregularity in this, in this case. Uh, they can come and we will explain to them with expertise. They're lawyers also, they come to our offices. We'll explain to them, if, there, if we discover that there is irregularity, we are immediately going to that case, following that up and clearing that up. So, so what, you are going to investigate this case? If, if we discover that there is irregularity, definitely we do that. It would be unfitting if I was not to ask you about the uh, nuclear negotiations uh, that are currently ongoing with the P5 plus one. Obviously it depends on the good faith of all sides, whether a deal is reached or not this month. How likely is it, do you think, that a deal will be struck? I am optimistic because I'm aware that the Western community are coming to the conclusion that Iran should be considered one of the most capable countries in nuclear technology. And Iran is delivering his obligation. If these two are acknowledged up to any degree, I think we will reach some agreement proportional to that degree. Politicians in the US and Israel, some on the, certainly on the right, think that you want to build a bomb. I think the right uh, politicians, the right wing politicians in the United States, they should go and see a psychiatrist. I mean, something is wrong with mental um, status. The world is not moving in the direction that they like. We are very much a strong country in the world, and they cannot change it the way they like. It is the right time for those countries who, who claim that to lead the world, to equip themselves with ideas which is capable of leading the world. These kind of suspicion and prejudice at the extreme is not capable of leading the world. Dr. Lara Johnny, thank you very much. Thank you.